Hey guys, Dr. Nate again. This is video number two. In the first video, you learned all about dental, uh, I guess teeth numbering, one through 32, the surfaces of the teeth, mesial, distal, occlusal, lingual, I hope you can say that fast now too. Uh, you learned about a profi versus an SRP. You learned something about the codes. I think that's all you learned, maybe some other stuff. Um, in this video, I want to talk to you about the different fillings and how a filling can turn into a crown and can turn into a root canal and what the difference is. Because a lot of times people don't understand how the progression works. So let's dump into it. So remember, we have some different surfaces of the teeth. You know, most of the time, uh, filling is gonna start or a cavity is gonna start most of the time on one surface, so potentially it starts off on the mesial surface. Remember that's a surface towards the midline, or maybe it starts on the distal surface. But by the time the patient gets into the office, most of the time it's grown since then. So maybe it started on the mesial, but now it went from the mesial to the clusal and the distal. When we're talking about fillings, when we're talking about fillings in the office, we don't say this to patients um, because it gets way too complicated. But if a dentist is talking to an assistant who's talking to a front office staff, we'll say, oh, that patient has an MOD. An MOD is a mesial occlusal distal filling um, or cavity. Or we'll say it's a DO, a distal occlusal. Or we'll say it's an MO, it's a mesial occlusal. We'll never, not never, we'll almost never say, oh, that patient has a mesial occlusal distal fit, uh, cavity. That just doesn't really happen. It's way too hard to say. It's hard to say even here. Um, so we'll say, hey, they have an MOD or they have an MODBL or they have a, um, there's dif different surfaces or different naming of what we call the, the filling. So we'll almost never say it fully outright. So you're gonna have to know, okay, um, the doctor said that this patient has a DO. Oh, I know that's a distal occlusal um, cavity, which will need a filling. At our offices, we do not use amalgam fillings. We don't use those silver fillings. Uh, that's something that they used to use a long time ago. It just isn't as appealing and has some other issues. So we use composite fillings in our office. So say a patient comes in and they're seeing us pretty regularly, maybe every six months or year, year and a half, um, and they just get a couple fillings. Most of the time, a cavity will start out as, a, as needing a small filling. So when the cavity is small, most of the time you can do a filling on that tooth. So in that same example, the patient comes in, has a small cavity, they may have an MO. We say, cool, we're gonna fill it with an MO composite. That should cover you, you should be good. Hopefully that lasts the rest of your life. Potentially it does, and that's it, that's easy. So most people, hopefully if they're coming in semi-regularly and they have a semi-good diet and their brushing and oral habits are good, hopefully they'll just need some few fillings or, or to fill a few cavities. Um, so that's how it starts off okay so if the filling or the cavity rather gets bigger and takes over maybe two-thirds of the tooth then you may need or that patient may need something called a crown so a crown is totally different than a filling normally a, ca a cavity will start off as maybe just needing a filling but if it gets too big the patient will need a crown so what is a crown a dental crown is when the patient comes in the office have a big um, cavity the dentist is going to prepare that tooth. And so what they do is they take off some of the tooth structure of the tooth. Most of the time it goes all the way around and a little bit on top. And then they get rid of all the cavities so everything looks nice and healthy. Sometimes they'll also put a buildup on that tooth and that's when the cavity has gotten so big, a lot of the tooth structure is gone. So they need to put some composite buildup on the tooth to make it look semi-normal again. Once that buildup is done, or if they don't need a buildup, once that preparation is done of that tooth, the assistant or the dentist is going to give that patient a temporary crown, not a permanent crown, a temporary crown. So the whole, the whole kind of series of events is patient comes in, obviously they get numb so they do not feel anything. The dentist prepares that tooth so they drill away some surface of the tooth. The assistant and the dentist will then take an impression of that tooth. They're gonna impress the tooth, so they have a good impression. They're gonna send that off to the lab, ideally the same day. But before the patient leaves, they're gonna leave with something called a temporary crown. And then they're gonna come back in a few weeks. We're gonna have that permanent crown that came in from the lab. We take off the temporary crown, put on the permanent crown, cement it with permanent cement, done deal. So that is the difference between a crown and a filling. The filling, they come in, we take away the cavity, put it, fill it with some composite material, same day, you know, it takes a few minutes, nothing too long, patient leaves, boom, they're good. Crown, most of the time it's two visits, on average that is true. Okay, so we go from a, a filling to a crown, 
to root canal. So say a patient hasn't come in for a long time and the filling or the uh, cavity rather has gone bigger and bigger and bigger and it's actually reached the pulp chamber. So let me go through the anatomy of teeth. You have the outer surface of the tooth, which is called enamel, and that's a few millimeters thick, and that is the strongest substance actually in the body, and it's called enamel. It's meant to you know, get all those chewing forces, so it's very, 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 very strong. Underneath the enamel, you have a few more millimeters of something called dentin, and this is a pretty porous substance, so that's the problem. When the filling, or cavity rather, gets in past the enamel and gets to the dentin. Once it gets into the dentin, it's tough because that cavity is gonna spread like crazy because dentin is so porous. Enamel's thick, so enamel's kind of like sort of fighting the cavity, doesn't want it to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Once it gets to the dentin, it tends to spread really quickly. So hopefully we catch it before it needs a root canal. And a root canal, oh, let me go to the anatomy a bit more. So you've got the enamel, dentin, underneath that you have the blood vessels and the nerves, and that's what makes the tooth healthy. The blood vessels and the nerves are the thing nourishing the teeth. So let's go back to this example. Patient comes in, the cavity has gone too big. It's actually gotten into the pulp chamber, pulp cavity. Um, the patient likely is going to be in a lot of pain, so sometimes we just give them antibiotics and have them come back later, but sometimes we try to treat them the same day. So they come in, lots of pain, but we can treat them because it's not too much and we can numb them up really good. What the dentist will do, they'll do the same process as a crown. You know, they'll remove all the decay, preparing it as if it's going to become a crown, but they're also going to go in there and remove some of the nerves and blood vessels from that tooth because it is infected and there's no way to make it healthy again. So you take away the nerves and the blood vessels and they fill it with something called gutta percha, which is kind of this inert substance that you fill teeth with, and then they seal it up and they'll probably, probably do a buildup like we mentioned before, and then the exact same process happens. The assistant and the dentist take an impression of that tooth, send it off to the lab, the dentist and the assistant make the temporary crown, not the permanent crown, they make the temporary crown, patient leaves, come back a few weeks later, boom, we cement that uh, permanent crown, and hopefully the patient is good forever. So that's the progression of disease, or that's the progression from a cavity to a crown to a root canal buildup crown. And that happens, you'll see this kind of at the offices all the time. And when we're going back to the codes, uh, the dreaded dental codes, remember every code is specific to every procedure. So if we go back to that um, specific um, um, filling code, it is gonna be different than a crown code, which is gonna be different than a root canal code and a buildup code. Uh, also, it depends on what surface, or sorry, what teeth rather you're getting it done. If you're getting a crown or, or a filling done on a back tooth versus a front tooth, the codes are going to be slightly different. And that's why knowing the overall idea of dental coding is so important. Okay, so hopefully I did an okay job of explaining the difference between a filling, a crown, and a root canal, and how the progression can go. Remember, 90% of the time or more, when somebody gets a root canal, they're going to need a crown on top of it because the tooth has become more brittle. Once again, we're going to go to these bite bank videos that I think are so helpful, and if you're watching this and you don't have access to bite bank, just get it. It's the best. If you're a dentist and you're watching this or a dental assistant, tell your dentist to get it because bite bank is absolutely outstanding. So I'm going to go into these videos and hopefully that's going to explain the difference between a crown, uh, sorry, filling, a crown, and a root canal a little bit better. So I will see you in the next video.